shunned by Jews in the Old Testament. Think of the way that uh, you, you've heard about how Jews treated Samaritans. They were idolaters, and they took the Jewish scriptures and twisted it, and they worshipped, uh, instead of Jerusalem, they worshipped on a, on a couple different mountains, and, uh, and they were shunned by the Jews. And they were supposed to be shunned by the Jews. There was supposed to be separation between the two groups. Verse 19 says, Now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, like, like those Samaritans were, like Gentiles used to be. But now, fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, so that you are brethren together, all built into the same building that is the church. The foundation of the church being Christ, then the apostles and the prophets, and then everyone who preached the gospel up until now. We're all together, one building, one united front being fitted together that grows to a holy temple in the Lord. That way God can have his people, God can have his holiness, the wrath of sin would be satisfied through the cross, and you and I can have a relationship with God. So I want to ask you a couple questions as we bring this study to a close. First of all, do you understand the message of of the gospel. Do you understand the message of the gospel? You were a wretched sinner. God's holiness demands that sin be dealt with. And the cross brings about uh, forgiveness of sin and, and, and a, a bringing brought near to God. Do you understand the message of the gospel? That Do you understand the, the fact that you are a wretched sinner, and Christ is an amazing Savior. That holiness demands destruction, but God in His love brings about salvation. Do you understand the message of the gospel? Number two, do you still appreciate grace? Do you still appreciate grace? I hope you do. Grace is something that needs to be championed by the church, but sometimes we run into... The problem of if we if we preach on grace too much, it just becomes some theological doctrine that's in our that's in our books, it's in our philosophy, it's in our preaching, but it, it's not always in our heart. Familiarity breeds contempt. If you're around something so much, you forget how lovely it is. And you, you're around something so much that, that is lovely over time, it just becomes normal. Do you still appreciate grace? When you read about God's holiness or when you hear about God's holiness, do you understand the fact that you and I deserve hell? Like that's where we should be. That's what we should get. But God is great grace has brought you near to his heart. Do you still appreciate grace? Thirdly, you are a citizen of heaven. Are you living like it? You are a citizen of heaven. Are you living like it? This passage never really gets into the fact that there are, there are people that are citizens of heaven, saved, born again Christians, that live full throttle for the world. Like they just forget about Christ is, needs to be first, and they make Christ last, and they live, even though they're Christians, they live for their, 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 their base desires. The, the, the things being talked about here in Philippians 3. You are a citizen of heaven. Do you, do you look like it? Do you live like it? Do you think that way? Or are you living for the, only the pleasures that the world can bring? Do you understand the message of the gospel? Do you still appreciate grace, how amazing it is? And, and thirdly, are you living as a citizen of heaven? I pray that you are, I trust you are, but... But we all have ups and downs in our spiritual life. Maybe there's some of you here that need to do business with the Lord. Maybe you need to uh, accept Christ if you've never done so before. Maybe you need to seriously repent of some worldliness that you're fully living for. That you're not giving up to the Lord. Maybe some of us have, have just gone to a place where we don't appreciate grace as much as we used to. You know, I love seeing new Christians that are just on fire for God. 
and they're they're absorbing all, everything that they can of doctrine and theology and scripture like a sponge because they're amazed at how great grace is. Can I see some older Christians that have walked the Lord for decades and they're jaded and they don't care as much anymore? And it's because what what was once so exciting became contemptible. It just got old over time. Do you still appreciate grace? Let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for the beautiful gift that we have in Christ. God, I pray, I pray that I would never forget how awesome grace is. Lord, we we preach on it, we, we make much of it, but God, I pray that it would truly have its home. Uh, a love and appreciation for grace would be in our hearts, in my heart, God. Lord, help us to know that you love us with a perfect love and that your son alone is what brings peace and brings joy. And I pray, God, that we would be so dependent on the joy that Christ brings that if we go one day without spending time with him, we would just be feeling like there's something missing in our lives. God, I pray that you would help us to know how beautiful the gospel is. You would help us to know how great grace is. God, I pray that uh, we would never become contempt with grace because we become so familiar with it. I pray, God, we'd stay excited. God, I pray that those that are living for the world, those that are living for sin would be able to repent of that and, and turn and embrace you and find true joy and satisfaction in who you are. Lord, you are our joy and our hope. We thank you so much for all the stuff that you, all the pleasure you bring into our lives. I pray, God, that we remember it every day. In your son's name, amen. Well, as we celebrate God's love, let's stand and sing. How deep the Father's love for us. As we sing this, I want you to think upon the fact that uh, the Lamb of God has your sin on his shoulders, and he was killed so that you might be free. Let's sing How Deep the Father's Love for us. How deep the Father's love for us. Beyond all
Yeah, well, I'd like to see how we can be praying for one another. I'm going to shut this off real quick.